So here we are at the 2014 International Robo Rave competition. Out here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, we've got the whole entire convention center rented out. We've got all three floors decked with over 1,300 students. You've got parents, students, teachers, everybody working together, trying to work towards a common goal. So this year I'm, uh, I'm facilitating, I'm, uh, I'm checking in people. It's, it's a great time to just see the amount of people coming to RoboRave now. When I started out, it was only 25 people and it's just exponentially grown. When we started out, we probably only had maybe 20 teams and now we have you know, 400 teams. So we have 1,700 kids participating this year, and it it's, it's continues to grow. Um, so it's exciting in that respect. And then we keep trying to add different challenges to keep the kids interested in what's going on with the robotics. So instead of just the line following, we added firefighting. And then last year, as I mentioned, we added jousting for another competition that they can try. So it, it's, you know, so they're trying to get their robot to do these really neat things. This is so powerful. We have been using things like Science Fair and Science Olympia and all these very traditional hooks to get kids into science and technology, engineering and math. When I watched robotics, I realized, oh my God, this is the most powerful tool to bring children in. What robotics allows is the ability for the average child the kid that we have to make sure education addresses everywhere. Not the really good and not the really bad, but those kids in the middle that are disenchanted, disengaged with the way we're doing education. So the idea of supporting robotics to me was, wow, we have a vehicle that could potentially bring more students into the fields that we need than anything that I have seen in 30 years of education. We need to take students to a whole new level! If I bring a kid to Rowery, even the ones that are not interested or don't know if they want to compete or they're intimidated, if they see it once, they walk out of here and all they're thinking about, they will tell me, whoa, I think next year I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I have had students that were not doers, they were passive learners, now being active learners. That's another thing that is very important. We have a lot of students that are passive and this will do it. Robo Rafe, you are doing science. You're not entirely aware sometimes that you are. Uh, and the reality is that scientists play with expensive toys and make good money at it. The kids kind of like learning on the fly how to fix and you know manage problems. That's we've already kind of seen that today where we've had to, we had a new track that we had to work off of and the kids had to sit down and we had to all talk about well, what's what's the way we're going to fix this you know first it was uh, maybe we have to change how we built the robot and make some design changes there and then uh, eventually we came to well we got to change the programming of the robot and that's something that you know uh, as much as we're kind of guiding them we're kind of they're the ones making the the you know the leap they're the ones saying hey yeah okay we need to do this or we need to do that so I think that's really great to see that, and I don't know that you would get that normally in a, in a normal classroom setting, so that's one of the real kind of big expectations I was hoping for from this, and, and we definitely, I think, uh, are delivering on that already. I actually don't think I've ever had a project where I've completely started from scratch so many times in such a short period. Like I said, in about three weeks we've worked it over a good dozen times, which has been different for me and almost frustrating. 
just because it is reworking. It seems like I have to throw out all this stuff from before. So in that way it is, I guess. You know, try, try, try again. Things go wrong. And then you work it out. And you try to work it out. And even though the kids are sometimes not doing well, they are working it out and having a good time at it. And students that were not team players now understand the uh, value of, of the team, of all of them together. Um, and they make relationships that otherwise they would not have made. Um, but when they see that they other students are having difficulties and yet they're enjoying it, it just all of a sudden is like a burn taken out and they don't, they don't, they're not nervous anymore. And now they start thinking, oh, I saw that, but I think I can do this. And oh, I, maybe I can do that. And uh, I, and that's, and then they're free. They're free of the nervousness. They're free of trepidation and they embrace the competition. So many times in academics, people get stuck with it being so serious, even as a middle school or high school student. Um, what is important and what I find exciting about these types of events is these kids are here excited, they're laughing, they're, they're meeting people from around the world with the same interests, and it's, it's okay to be the smart one here. You know, it, it's fun to be the smart one here. You, you get excited, you get recognized. These kids, they, they work so hard all year, and. They, they program these robots and they build these robots and to being able to come and compete with you know their peers from different countries and it's just an, an incredible place for them to come and gather and to meet other people and to learn other processes and it's, it's, it's it is it's where the world comes to play from little kids to big kids and the excitement in all of their faces is the same no matter their, what age they are para mí es una gran alegría estar por primera vez siendo parte del staff de RoboRay. Pienso que es una brillante idea porque hay mucha gente que viene de países que hablan español y realmente me hace sentir muy feliz que pueda ayudarles a resolver sus problemas porque muchos de ellos no hablan inglés. Entonces, realmente eso muestra que RoboRay es una competencia internacional y es un enorme privilegio ser parte de esto. I love RoboRay. It's just it's one of the best events around. I mean, you could do first robotics or you could do you could do first Lego League. Um, the only problem I've ever seen with those is you're stuck using Lego kits or required kits. Roborave, you can bring whatever you have. If you have a robot that's worth $25 or $2,000, you can bring a robot here and you can really enjoy yourself. And kids just are fascinated about this. The they, three-year-old kids will look at the robots and are like, I want one of those. And then the, kid, the parents will buy them a kit and then all you know, they could end up seven years old, they could be at the Robo Rave winning the event. Overall, in a nutshell, I'd say RoboRave International is successful because it started by teachers. It's still focused on teachers to help them reach kids that they're having problems reaching through their normal or formal education. We're giving them hope. We're giving them opportunity to re-engage kids into a style of learning that just happens to be about science, technology, engineering, and math, but not as a formal teaching. It's about play. And tell me who in this world doesn't like to play.